Greetings in the wonderful name of our Lord Jesus. We give the Lord all the praise and we give the Lord all the glory and all the honor. My name is Prophet Rian. This is on the Watchtower. This is Lighthouse Radio. Um, Apologies, we are a bit late tonight, but at least we are on air. We are broadcasting and to all our listeners, we give the Lord all the praise and all the glory from all our listeners in South Africa, across the world, to all our listeners on Cornerstone Radio. May you be blessed, and may the Lord's hand truly be upon you, and may the Lord lead you, and may the Lord strengthen you to His glory. Now, uh, we are continuing with a series entitled Restoring the Altar, um, and this has been quite a very in-depth study. You know, I started writing the study a while ago, and it started out, you know, as a very basic concept, what to do in our times of apostasy and what to do in the times of the great falling away. Um, and since then, you know, Lord, it just added and added, um, you know, and this volume of work, you know, I keep on publishing it, I keep on revising it. Um, and then, you know, at the end of the day, you just realize, you know, how great the apostasy is, how great is the, the falling away, how great is the rebellion. And in the midst of all of this, there is a call to action for us to do something, for us to become discerning, for us to to to, to take note of what is happening in our days. Um, so this is why the series, you know, I I actually intended to finish the series probably a month ago, a month and a half ago, but you know the Lord just keeps on adding. Um, so you know I I have to be at the end of the day. Um, you know, I have to be obedient to what the Lord is saying. I have to be obedient to, um, you know, to as the Holy Spirit leads and as the Spirit of the Lord guides so that we can truly listen to what the Lord is saying so that we can be aware of what is happening in our days. So tonight, you know, I want to deal with, you know, when we're talking about restoring the altar, I want to deal with a, a subject matter that is entitled, you know, the spiritual madness that breeds apostasy. Now, you might wonder where this concept of spiritual madness comes from. Well, it actually originates from a vision that my wife, uh, you know, had a, quite a number of years ago. And, you know, I just want to quickly talk to you what, what she saw in this vision and this was back in, 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 in August 2012. So we're talking about six years later. And this is what the Lord showed her in a dream. And, and the Lord showed her a family around a d- dinner table. And she described it as a normal scene about a family ready to sit down and have a wonderful meal together and spend quality time to talk and share stories of the events during the day. Now, as she moved closer to join them at the table, she could see that, you know, there was no food on the table. Um, There was only a linen over the table. There was a candle holder and a candle burning faintly, flickering shadows over the mother and the child's faces. And she saw that they looked thin and they looked pale and very sad. And there was a singular tear that ran down the mother's thin, pale, pale cheek. And of course, at the time that she did not understand what was going on and why they looked so sad. And then she turned to the father and, you know, she was looking for answers while the mother and the child looked so sad and grim. And that is when she saw the father of the household pacing up and down and muttering words that I, at least that she could not understand. And he had a very prominent white shirt on, and it reminded her of how a white shirt is a sign of a priestly garment and an outward sign of so-called godliness, like a whitewashed tomb, according to Matthew 23. And at that time, in, in, in what the Lord showed her, she leaned forward and touched the woman on her arm to get her attention. And as she leaned closer, she spoke to the woman that they need God in their lives 
and that only he can change their desperate situation. And this is when she woke up and she was puzzled about this dream and what it meant. And she asked God to talk to her about it and to reveal to her the message behind the vision. And while she was praying and seeking the answers, again the Lord showed her the father figure. And then the Lord said to her that his church is in ruins because it is being postured by mad men. And the family, under that mad, mad man that she was seeing in her vision, it was they were physically and spiritually starving. They were actually physically and spiritually dying. And so we have to realize that the church of today is also dying. We have to realize that the sheep have become thin and malnurtured because the shepherd has not followed the leading of the Holy Spirit and therefore followed his own program for gain and for profit. Now, that was a vision, like I said, 2012. Uh, at the time, the vision was written down. And that was a vision that was left. It was written down. Now, six years later, the Lord has revisited that vision. He has, he has come to, to expound on it, to explain that vision. Certainly in the time, how, what we are living in now. And again, you know, when the Lord spoke about that vision... He pointed to the reality that this church is in ruins because it is being pastured by mad men. And like I said, you know, this vision has been dormant. And, you know, once the Lord gave a revelation, you know, and, and like I said, you know, with God, everything is about timing. Everything with God, it is the right time at the right moment. And of course, you know, the last, Probably the last two years, two and a half years, the Lord has really been dealing with apostasy. So it 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 probably is probably quite understandable that right now is the time for God to explain this vision. Because if he had explained it in back in two thousand and twelve, it would not have made sense as what it makes now. And so we need to realize you know, in the time that we are dealing with where the church is falling deeper into apostasy. And you know, so we have to revisit this vision. We have to revisit what God is saying to us. And we have to realize that when we are speaking about mad, it speaks really about not being of a sound mind. A sound mind is therefore, um, you know, a sound mind is or at least a lack of a sound mind comes when we conform to the world. You know, and this is why a sound mind is when we follow the will of God, when we conform to the, to, 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 to the word of God, when we submit and when we heal and when we are led and when we are transformed by the renewing of our mind according to Romans 12, so that we may prove what is, that, what is good and acceptable and the perfect will of God. You know, and if you go and look about the concept of renewing the mind and setting your mind upon God, it is, on, it is also underlined in 1 Peter 1. And I want to read from verse 13. It says, Therefore gird up the loins of your mind and be sober and rest your hope fully upon the grace that is to be brought to you at the revelation of of our Lord Jesus Christ. Then it says, As obedient children, not conforming yourselves to the former lust, as in your ignorance, but as he who called you is holy, you also be holy in your conduct, because it is written, Be holy, for I am holy. Therefore we shall walk by a sober mind when we focus upon the Lord, meditate upon his word, therefore his truth, and when we seek above all else, the Lord. So when we fail to do so, a mind which is not sound, therefore undergoes the process of falling into spiritual madness. So spiritual madness, I'm not talking here about psychological disorders. 
I am talking here of spiritual madness that comes when we do not yield and submit to the will of God, when we do not yield and submit to the wisdom and to the knowledge and the counsel of the Holy Spirit according to Isaiah 11. So therefore spiritual madness speaks about spiritual carnality. When our mind is not affixed upon God, when we are not led by the Holy Spirit who knows the mind of the Lord, for the Holy Spirit is God, part of the Trinity. So to maintain a sound mind, we must meditate accordingly to Philippians 4, verse 8, which says, Finally, brethren, whatever things are true and whatever things are noble, whatever things are just, whatever things are pure, whatever things are lovely, whatever things are of good report, if there is any virtue and if there is anything praiseworthy, meditate on these things. Then it says in verse 9, The things which you learned and received and heard and saw in me, these do, and the God of peace will be with you. Now regarding this vision, specifically the sound mind versus the madness, let us consider what the prof prophet Hosea said in chapter 9. He says, the days of punishment have come, and the days of recompense have come. Israel knows, and the prophet is a fool. The spiritual man is insane because of the greatness of your iniquity and great enmity. And then it says in verse 8, The watchman of Ephraim is with my God, but the prophet is a fouler snare in all his ways. Enmity in the house of his God. They are deeply corrupted. As in the days of Gibeah, he will remember their iniquity, he will punish their sins. So, the chapter in Hosea, what I just read according to the Amplified, translated as as follows. It says specifically about the prophet. The prophet is considered a fool. The man of God who is inspired is treated as if demented because of the abundance of your wickedness and guilt. And because your deep antagonism towards God and the prophets is so great. Now remember Isaiah, who, who lived around 750 to 722 BC, was a prophet of the kingdom of Israel. He called on Israel to repent of its sins of apostasy and warned of the judgment to come from God. And of course, as with so many other prophets, the people did not listen. It is shocking how the Lord says that the prophet in the days of Hoshea was foolish and even worse, the spiritual man, insane. So you see, I want to connect this to a scripture for you to understand that I'm not talking to you tonight out of the imagination or I'm now, you know, talking foolishness. It is written in the word as well that in the days of apostasy, the spiritual man was insane. The, the prophet was a foolish man. And such foolishness of the prophets was echoed by Ezekiel in chapter 13 verse 3. It says, Therefore says the Lord God, Woe to the foolish prophets who follow their own spirit and have seen nothing. And of course it says in Proverbs 1 verse 7, The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge, but fools despise the wisdom and instruction. Therefore the so-called prophets in the days of Hosea ultimately despise the wisdom and the instruction of the Lord. This is how foolishness sets in. Jesus said in Matthew 7 verse 26, But everyone who hears these sayings of mine and does not do them will be like a foolish man who built his house on the sand. Indeed, it is foolishness when we heed not God or follow his ways or his truth. This was the path followed by the prophets in the days of Hosea. And thus, and this is sadly the path that still many follow today in the churches. After all, it says in Job 28 verse 28, Behold the fear of the Lord, that is wisdom, and to depart from evil is understanding. My dear listener, apostasy is upon us. If you, you can deny it, but it is no reality. Just look around you because there is little understanding. And we have departed from the truth of God. Who see a former... Uh, chapter 4 verse 6 says my people are destroyed from lack of knowledge because you have rejected knowledge I also reject you as my priest because you have ignored the law of your God and I will also ignore your children you see a lack of knowledge speaks of, of, of ignorance 
the definition of ignorance is it is a lack of knowledge or information. In Hosea 3, the people were warned that they were being destroyed because they rejected the Lord's knowledge. The Holy Spirit, according to Isaiah 11, is the spirit of knowledge, wisdom and understanding of a counsel. The spirit was poured out to lead and guide us in all truth. Therefore, there is no excuse for ignorance. We are called to walk in God's wisdom and not the wisdom or the knowledge of this world. And we must be careful not to interpret the truth according to the wisdom formed or shaped by our own perceptions, ideas and education. You see, the Lord has really placed it on my heart of late more than ever that the things that we teach and preach and advocate, proclaim and encourage and embrace as being a truth, which is not always so, and they are truth of the Lord that we oppose, merely we lack understanding and we lack knowledge. Therefore we walk in ignorance. You see, if we fail to walk in the complete truth of God and remain not seeking the right path, therefore not repenting, then we have rejected truth. Therefore we are walking in rebellion which breeds spiritual madness which is nothing more than the folly of not fearing God and perishing because of a lack of God's knowledge. Remember, if we preach not the entire truth of the gospel, we then are accursed. That is what Galatians 1 verse 9 says. And therefore, if we embrace and teach and preach a, 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 a truth which is not the truth of God, then we are speaking a curse. Then we are a curse. And I'm sorry, but if you speak a curse, and if you are a curse, then that speaks of madness. You see, if we embrace and teach and preach something which is not from God, we are embracing that curse. We are embracing the madness. And this is why God is saying, my, my people... My church is being led by madmen simply because he's not talking about people running around like lunatics. He's talking about a people who are, who are like, acting foolishly. They are acting as if a people who have not embraced an, the truth of God and they're not teaching and preaching that, that truth. They are running around as a people who are accursed. They are teaching a curse. Even worse, we run the risk of mocking and rebelling against him for not walking in his truth. And remember, rebellion is like sin of witchcraft, and we are in danger of blaspheming against the Holy Spirit. So it says in Galatians 6 verse 7, Do not be deceived, God is not mocked, for whatever a man sows, that he will also reap. So my dear listener, let's be just very honest here. If we're going to sow curses, we're going to reap curses. Sow madness, you're going to reap madness. So the church is led by spiritual madmen. Let us take note of the word accursed and let us connect it to Deuteronomy 28. Verse 15 it says, But it shall come to pass, if thou wilt not hearken unto the voice of the Lord like God, to observe to do all his commandments and his statutes which I command thee to in this day, then all of these curses shall come upon thee and overtake thee. And then it continues, verse 28, it says, The Lord shall smite thee with madness and blindness and astonishment of heart. Yes, you read that correct. It says, The Lord shall smite thee with madness and blindness and astonishment of heart. And thou shalt grope at noonday as the blind gropeth in darkness. And thou shalt not prosper in thy ways, and thou shalt be only oppressed and spoiled evermore, and no man shall save thee. My dear listener, let us just get this right here. God says in Deuteronomy 28, and remember God has never changed. He says very simply, that if you choose me and choose my, my statutes and my commandments, my teachings, you'll be blessed. But if you oppose it in any way, then you will, you will allow yourself, by your choices, to allow curses to come upon you because you walk in rebellion you oppose God rebellion is like the sin of witchcraft you give legal ground to the enemy to come and oppose and to, and to, and to work and to manipulate and to seduce you now part of that curses what God is saying is madness, blindness and astonishment of heart therefore he's talking about foolishness he's talking about spiritual blindness he's talking about madness 
Let me tell you something here tonight. The Apostle Paul, before he became the Apostle Paul, he was called Saul. Saul who persecuted the Christians of the true way. He was spiritually mad. He was spiritually mad because he was foolish in his rebellion to persecute God's people. So God struck him with blindness. But what we don't realize is that Saul was already spiritual blind. So God struck him with physical blindness so that his spiritual sight could open. So that he could clearly see what was happening. God did not just cure him of his blindness. Hallelujah. Hear what God is saying to us tonight. God cured Saul who became Paul of his spiritual madness. And he cured him of the astonishment of heart because Paul now saw, Paul realized, Paul discerned the follow of his ways. And no longer he was he a spiritual blind man groping in the darkness, not prospering in his ways. He was no longer oppressing people. He was now a man who was set out to save the Gentiles because he could spiritually see he was no longer spiritually mad, spiritually blind, because God met him on the road to Damascus to cure him of his spiritual blindness and to cure him of his spiritual madness. Praise God. You know, that amplified of this passage, it says in verse 28, The Lord will strike you with madness and with blindness and with bewilderment of heart and mind. That is shocking, isn't it? But can you see that what I'm saying to you tonight is not something that I'm just imagining here. It's in the Bible. We just never saw it because God wants to open our eyes that His church is being led by madmen who are spiritually blind and spiritually foolish because they have rejected the ways and the truth of God. Deuteronomy 28, the Lord gave His people a choice. Seek Him and be blessed or be cursed because of lack of obedience. And this cursing simply implies the consequence of a life separated from, from the truth. Counsel, strength, and the power of God. Therefore, life of the Lord which comes through disobedience and rebellion. Such a curse is upon those in Revelation 22, which says, We will forever be outside the gates of Jerusalem. It says in verse 15, Outside are the dogs. The godless, the impure, those of low moral character and the sorcerers with their intoxicating drugs and magic arts and the immoral persons, the perverted, the molesters and the adulterers and the murderers and the idolaters and everyone who loves and practice lying, therefore de deception and cheating. Indeed, those who are on the outside, therefore, they have rejected the ways of God are those who reject the Lord and His truth. Therefore are rejecting God's knowledge and so fall into the trap of an unstable mind. So Deuteronomy 28, we are dealing with madness and the bewilderment of heart and mind because they did not hearken unto the voice of the Lord like God to observe to do all His commandments and His statutes. So what was the consequence? Disobedience, rebellion, which is like the sin of witchcraft. Galatians 1 verse 9, which is, and of course, remember Galatians 9, verse 1 verse 9, we read, of those who are accursed for not preaching the gospel of the Lord. Therefore they become accursed, just as those who will be cursed for not listening to God or obeying the Lord according to Deuteronomy 28. So are we hearing the Lord? If we disobey the Lord and continue to rebel and mock Him, we shall become accursed. And as we become of such a nature, we become mad and suffer the astonishment of heart, which speaks of fear and anguish and distress, and all of this as a result of disobedience. Now let's just stop here for a moment because the Lord wants me to stop. Hey, do we realize how many Christians today are so filled with fear, anguish and distress? That speaks about a bewilderment of heart. Now, what happens if you are bewildered in, at your heart? It means that you're not walking in the blessing of God. It means you're not walking in the fullness of God. It means that you are not abiding in God. Because fear and anguish and distress is a result of the bewilderment of the heart, which comes upon those 
who are cursed, it means those who are not walking in the will of God. And now we can say tonight, but surely Jesus has come and he has removed all the curses upon the cross and by the blood. Oh yes, he has. Praise God. But the curses is removed by the blood so to remain in the blessing of the blood that has removed the curses you need to remain under the blood you need to abide in the Lord according to John 15 for there is no condemnation Romans 8 verse 1 for those who are in Christ in Christ not outside of Christ not outside the gates of Jerusalem inside the Lord for then we go back to Deuteronomy 28 nothing has changed Blessed are those who heed the commandments and the teachings of God. So, if you are truly abiding in the Lord, then you are following God and His teachings, His commandments. You are not rebelling against it. You are obeying and, 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 and you are following God's ways. But Deuteronomy 28 is very clear that you will be cursed. Which basically means that if you do not obey God, if you do not fear God, if you rebel against Him and therefore fall into the category of apostasy and rebellion and, great re and are falling away, then it simply means that you are not abiding in God, because if you are abiding in God, then you are surely obeying God. If you are not obeying God, then you cannot be abiding in God, therefore you are outside the blood, and trust me, Everything that's outside the blood is still cursed. This world has not been redeemed. That will come at the end of all ages. We who are under the blood is redeemed. If you want to really walk in the blessings of God, get under the blood, get under the covenant, abide in the Lord, for then there is no condemnation, for then there is a sound mind, for then there is blessings. But everything outside of that, in this world, we still live in a world of great carnality, apostasy, violence, murder, mayhem, lawlessness, because this world is not yet covered by the blood of our Lord. Yet, if you are, as a believer, covered, then you live in the blessings and not the curses. So, therefore, let us just be very honest and very clear about this. If God says that His church is led by, by madmen, by spiritually, by spiritually blind, for those who are not, uh, you know, obeying God, it simply means that w the church is led by many who are not abiding in God, who are not abiding in God's teachings, who is not doing what God is telling them to do, who is not obeying, who is not faithfully following God. They are following their own agenda, their own programs, their own desires, their own agendas. For true, for those who abide in God, you will walk in the wisdom and the counsel of God. Hallelujah, praise God. But there is no wisdom, there is no counsel, there is no understanding. If you do not abide in God, if you are not remaining under the blood, in the covenant, loyal, faithful, true to God, walking as a worshipper in spirit and in truth. And this is what the Lord therefore showed in the vision of 2012. Men and women in the church babbling things that are not of any worth or value or truthful, for they are spiritually mad, therefore foolish, ignorant, and rebellious. You know, Peter, who spoke of false teachers and preachers in 2 Peter 2, also said the following in 2 Peter 1. I'm reading out of the Amplified, it says, verse 16. For we did not follow cleverly devised stories or myths when we made known to you the power and coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. But we were eyewitnesses of his majesty, his grandeur, his authority, his sovereignty. So Peter made it known that the truth they proclaimed was not mere folly or madness, but it was the truth of God in such a truth is the authority and might of the Lord. So, you know, I, I want to really want to clear this up tonight because, you know, there is the perception, there is the continual perception in the church today that, hey, you know, we are no longer under the law, we are no longer under the curse, praise and the great, hallelujah. Both, both uh, perceptions, both of those points of view that is 
been formed into theology is very dangerous if you if you misunderstand it if you if it's misconstrued number one god is not a god of lawlessness he is still a law of god and order all the law according to matthew 5 has been fulfilled in jesus it does not say that we do we follow a lawless god we still follow a god of law and order which has been fulfilled in the teachings and the commandments and the ways of the kingdom of god as as taught by our lord jesus secondly we are not under the curse but then you must remain under the blood psalm 91 remain under the shadow of the mighty then you will be be, be spared from the from the snare of the father all of that stuff but if you step out of the blood of jesus out of the covenant by your rebellion and your iniquity and your your ignorance and your and, and whatever else you step right into the fowler's snare and you become a prey for that, for that, that lion called the, 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 the devil that appears like a lion looking for those to devour. And I want to come back to you because this is so important. This is so important because I want us to hear what God is saying to us. For this is a revelation God is saying to us. He did not just come to, to heal Paul called Saul of his spiritual blindness. He came to heal Paul of his spiritual madness because he was walking and following in rebellion. He was not listening to God, so God had to heal him in the name of our Lord Jesus. God had to heal him in the name of our Lord Jesus. And truly God touched him. God touched his mind. God renewed his mind. God gave him comprehension, insight, understanding by the power of the Holy Spirit. And Paul saw Paul the soon and he knew what he was doing was folly. It was madness. It was stupidity. It was ignorance. He turned from that way to follow God. Take note of what Paul is warning. What, what, he, what he writes what he writes as a warning to Timothy 1 Timothy 4 verse 3 it says and I urge you when I was on my way to Macedonia stay on at Ephesus that you may instruct certain individuals not to teach any different doctrines nor to pay attention to legends fables and myths and endless genealogies which give rise to useless speculation and meaningless arguments rather than advancing God's program of instruction which is grounded in faith and requires surrendering to the entire self to God in absolute trust and confidence. Verse 5 it says, But the goal of our instruction is love, which springs forth from a pure heart and a good conscience and a sincere faith. Then it says in verse 6, Some individuals have wandered away from these things into empty arguments and useless discussions, wanting to be teachers of the law of Moses, even though they do not understand the terms they use or the subjects about which they make such confident declarations. So indeed, for those who walk in the truth of God, they walk in the ways of God. But the reality is that the church is saturated with legends, therefore fables and myths, and endless genealogies, therefore folly, therefore spiritual madness, which give rise to useless speculation and meaningless arguments, to rather, instead of rather advancing God's program, of instruction which is grounded in faith. Because of the spiritual madness that we find in the church, we are living in the days of 2 Timothy 3, 2 Timothy 4, and also the book of Jude. I have spoken on this program about how Paul came and he said, we must only preach and teach the, 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 the intended wisdom of God. Anything else that we preach which is not the gospel of God, the 100% pure way of God. That's foolishness. That is foolishness. And it speaks of ignorance, therefore spiritual madness. And we continue on this path because of spiritual blindness. We are ignorant and we must be careful that we do not continue to lead people in that ignorance and that foolishness, which is nothing more than spiritual madness. That is very destructive in nature, it destroys and kills. And this is why God says, My people perish because of a lack of knowledge. And where does that lack of knowledge come from? It comes from a people who are preaching and teaching a word which is not the truth of God. Fables, legends, myths, stuff that comes out of their imagination to profit and to benefit the self, not glorifying God. This has been Lighthouse Radio. Uh, I'm going to continue with this topic next week monday night 
Sorry tonight, we are running a bit out of time. I started a bit late, but praise God. The Lord is sharing with us. The Lord is talking to us. I pray that we will listen to what God is saying to us. I pray that we will humble and yield ourselves to God, that God can heal and heal us of our spiritual mind, of our spiritual madness, our spiritual depravity, our spiritual blindness, so that we can walk again in the ways and the truth of the Lord God. Indeed, there is nothing as great as our God. Give Him, Lord, give him all the praise and all the glory. This has been Lighthouse Radio, broadcasting the gospel and the good news of our Lord throughout the world, only the truth of God as led by the Holy Spirit. May you be blessed. I'm 